Our first guest tonight is a talented actor you know from shows such as Little Fires Everywhere and Grey's Anatomy. He recently made his Broadway debut in Take Me Out, which is currently playing at the Hayes Theater. Please welcome to the show Jesse Williams, everybody. <laughs> I'm amazing. Thanks for having me. Thank you for making time for us on your on your one day off. Yeah, yeah, it's a tight squeeze these days. I mean, I, I would imagine the routine and the schedule for a show like Grey's Anatomy is intense, but this is your Broadway debut. Yeah. I can't imagine there's anything quite like the Broadway schedule. It's insane. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. The level Now that we're done with tech and the rehearsals, we were doing 10 to 12 hour days of rehearsal, then doing a show eight, nine times a week. Now we're just doing our shows, so you get there a couple hours before. Um, but uh, it is a high wire act. It's so much more physical than TV. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think one of the hardest parts about TV, which people don't really understand, is how much like sitting around and waiting yeah. for your time. Yeah, Whereas, yeah. especially with a show like this, there's not a lot of sitting around for. No, for it's you. it's so physical and complete. Uh, I am absolutely depleted and exhausted after every single show. It's and yet, awful. you also know you have to do it the very next day. <laughs> or or in two hours because yeah. it's two a day. Yeah, so often. two a day twice a week or once two a week. Now two a day twice a week. I mean, gotcha. in previews it was a show Friday night, two Saturday, two Sunday. Then we moved into two Wednesday. So does it at least feel like less work now after what you went through in the previews and tech? Versus? Yes, okay. it was the boot camp was so intense that everything, yeah, it, yeah. somehow you're, you're you're happy. And did you feel like a lot of pressure about that? Were you stressed out the opening night? I really wasn't. I feel like I was supposed to be. Yeah. Everybody put a lot of stress on me. <laughs> sure. I mean, I'd only just for, it's my first time doing a play. Yeah. Doing a Ever? three act. Yeah, doing okay. a, like a three act play. I've done a one act before once. and um. Uh, so everybody's, you know, they're, you know, they're so excited about. Like, are you, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And then there's nudity in the play. So again, like yep. projecting all of this fear onto me. And I just don't really. I'm not. I'm not scared. It was. It was fun. So this is a, a play uh, that covers sexuality and race, and you know, obviously, it's it's a baseball play as yeah. well. Yeah. And so there's a locker room scene, and you mentioned the nudity. Uh, what were you, what were his, your prediction of what the reaction would be versus what the reaction actually was? Um, I had something kind of got planted in my head. Me and my uh, uh, good friend Adapero went to see Soldiers play right before. We were in rehearsals for this play before COVID happened. So right. two and a half years ago, we're getting geared up. We go to see this play. Uh, Blair Underwood is one of the lead. Legendary, most handsome man in the world, Blair Underwood. And we start like the second act. And, you know, I know that I'm going to do this nude scene. And I'm watching this play, and he starts the second act. He's buttoning the top three buttons of a button-down shirt. He's fully dressed. Yeah. He's just buttoning the top three buttons <laughs> of a shirt. And the audience goes, wow. The ladies are hooting and hollering. <laughs> like, shut up. The production has to wait like an extra 10 <laughs> seconds. And I was like, oh, my God. What are they going to do for full-on seven, two naked men out on the yep. stage? Um, but we kind of <laughs> get the opposite reaction in our play. It's so, there's, it's so intense, and the language is so dense that as soon as naked people come out, everybody gets quiet. You can hear a pin drop or something else drop. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, it, it gets really quiet every time uh, we come out there. So uh, and every now and then there's some, there's some shrieks or gasps <laughs> or people scurrying out. <laughs> the, light, the light of the exit door cascades on the yeah, And then people in the street see the nudity yes, and they're exactly. like, whoa, it's a whole different, yeah. The licensing, yeah, it's tough. Um, when was the last, what was the last organized baseball game you played? Oh, I played until high school. Okay. I played pretty intensely. Traveled. It was it was a really big connective thread for me and my dad. My brother played. He was even better than me. Uh, baseball was everything. I grew up in Chicago, so the gotcha. Cubs, going to Cubs games. And uh, so baseball was a huge part of my life and life lessons. All those kind of cliche you uh -huh. know, metaphors that, uh, were taught to me. Um, so it was a big part of my existence. Um, uh, so that's a big part of my connection to the character. So your dad, was your dad a coach when you were He coached up? us, yeah. Was he a good coach? How was he it? was great. I had a dad coach me as well, and, uh, and maybe sounds like it might be a little different. It, well, <laughs> I, so I kind of hated it then, but you yeah. appreciate it later. He was very intense, and everything was a lesson. Everything was a life lesson. Everything was a challenge. I would be <laughs> six years old, even just getting to practice. I'd be like, Dad, when's practice? He's like, you don't know? Find out. Call your coach. He's like, wow. I'm six. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Call him, find out. You don't depend on anybody for any information ever. Goes, uh, okay, I mean, it's finished my Captain Crunch, and then I'll <laughs> go talk to this adult man and figure out my scheduling. Um, yeah, everything was My dad uh, dovetailed very nicely because he was the kind of uh, baseball coach, also very intense. Uh -huh. And then um, I think someone, some of the other dads took him aside and they go, you seem like you should be an umpire. <laughs> 
Wow. And then my dad was an umpire for years and years. To get him away from the children. They were like, I, there's a place where it's okay to scream at them. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Not while you're handing out orange slices. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a good place where you can scream after every pitch. Right, yeah. exactly. Get and that uh, yeah, he found, a, he found a very nice home there. That's funny. Um, and your parents were teachers. They are, yeah, they, they were. Still. My mom just retired. All uh, right. They both were teachers, yeah. I, I was a teacher. Um, partly because of them, certainly. They didn't start teaching until I was in college. Okay. Um, so they had many other jobs before then. But yeah, my mom just retired and my dad just, just finished up a couple years ago as well. What did, you, uh, what did you teach? I taught high school primarily in Philadelphia where I went to college, okay. Temple University. I primarily taught humanities, American studies, African American studies, and continental African history. Were you a good teacher? I was a damn good teacher. Really? Yeah. 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 I, I really was. I yeah. loved it. It was my favorite job ever still. I love my job now, but that was uh, incredibly rewarding, and I felt... Did you feel there was a common skill as far as a performer being both an actor and a teacher? I learned it later that there is a commonality. You know, you're, you're hosting a, a room full of people, a, a space full of people that don't necessarily want to be there. Right. You got to keep their attention. Yeah. You got to keep them engaged. Yep. You got to be spontaneous. You got to be able to improv and ad lib and keep things alive. Um, and make it interesting while also, you know, putting some sugar in the medicine or medicine in the sugar. You yeah. Know, keeping, keeping In the most, I, I think that age in particular is the most intimidating age of people to be in front of. Yeah, yeah, high schoolers will run you to the ground. I'd rather yeah. do yeah, I, I'd rather do a show in a prison than in a high school. <laughs> high, high school is terrifying. Yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. Because they're also funny as hell. They'll rip on you. I remember this kid ripped on my my boots. <laughs> I was poor. I didn't have any money. My, I had the same winter, you know, Philadelphia winters. I had the same boots for like seven years. They were all like shredded. Yeah. And this kid, he was so funny. He was like, Damn, he looked down at my, <laughs> my boots and he was like, damn, Mr. Williams, I didn't know you had a dog. <laughs> and it was, it was brilliant. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even be mad. It was hilarious. And my shoes looked like they had been chewed on by a dog. Yeah. Good. So shout out to, to you. I forget his name. Yeah. You, well, if you remembered his name, I would hope you'd show up at his house now and show him your nice <laughs> yeah, boots. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Things worked out pretty well for Mr. Williams. Who's laughing now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, uh, your kids are six and eight. Yeah. Uh, and they've come out to New York since you started doing yeah, this. They I would love imagine it. Uh, the play you're currently in is not for them. It's not for them, but I did. You know, you work around it. It's their first time really exploring New York City. So yeah. Watching people, watching your kids discover New York and the, how it's the, the awesome yeah. power of it is spectacular. So you take them around. We saw Lion King. We saw Harry Potter, which we're reading together. And um, I took them to the theater our theater, just to see our vocal warm-ups. Like, but they can't see the play, yeah. but they can see the really silly vocal warm-ups. And for those of you that don't have theater or musical theater people in your life, we look ridiculous. Yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, 15, you know, grown men on stage jumping around like monkeys and, and making all types of animal sounds and doing stretching and banging on their chest and woo-woo. <laughs> It looks ridiculous, so they thought that was great. Yeah. They thought, Daddy's an idiot, and it's really fun. <laughs> yeah. They watched that, and then I sent him on to go do okay. something. Okay, how is uh, uh, our six-year-old is our oldest, and he just, uh, he went to Lion King. That was his first show. Yeah. He just went a couple yeah. months ago. Uh, did they love it? They as, loved it. Yeah. They were just in awe. Uh, by, the, by the very end, they were kind of getting a little, Yeah. You know, it's long. Yep. Um, but it's spectacular. It's really awesome, but interesting. The, an interesting word. thing happened to my six-year-old who has a very early bedtime, which is he went to Lion King and then like drove through Times Square at night to go home, you know, with his, uh, uh, with the, my wife and the uh -huh. Uber. And so he got home and by the time he got home, like Times Square was cooler than Lion King. He's oh, like, wow. you cannot believe what's going on in this city. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, that's the most recent stimulus. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah. tell me more about the Lion King. He's like, Dad, there are screens yeah. that are just changing constantly. Have you heard of Samsung? <laughs> yeah. They Dad, are I need to tell you about Samsung. <laughs> Their product line. <laughs> Their new rollout. Uh, well, congratulations on uh, Broadway debut. It's, uh, it's really nice having you here in New York City. Thank and you thanks so for much. being with us tonight. Thank you. Please come out and check out the show. We're, we're having a great time. All right, you guys, that's Jesse Williams. Thank you. Take me out. Currently playing at the Hayes Theater.